Cartilage damage can be divided into three categories. Firstly, a small section of cartilage can come away from the joint with a piece of bone attached. This type of lesion can heal. The fragment can be reattached using a screw to enable stabilization and consolidation of the cartilage. The surface of the joint is thus restored. Once consolidated, it is often useful to envisage removing the screw. The second possible scenario is damage to the cartilage alone, which breaks into several fragments that come away in the joint, causing pain and blocking. The fragments are removed arthroscopically. The damaged area where the bone is exposed is abraded with a shaver in order to stimulate healing. Then micro holes are created using a technique called pridey drilling. This induces a fibrocartilaginous healing which allows for the recovery of 80% of the normal mechanical functioning of the cartilage. A few weeks or even a few months are necessary for the surface of the cartilage to heal. Finally, a fragment can come away with a piece of subchondral bone. Both bone and cartilage are lost in this case. Too altered and worn, the fragment causing pain and blocking is removed since it cannot be reattached. It is thus necessary to reconstruct the cartilage but also the subchondral bone. To do this, bone and cartilage plugs are harvested from an area on the surface of the knee where the cartilage is of little use. The damaged site is prepared and these samples are grafted. Several plugs are often required. This is referred to as mosaic plasty. In this case, it is also necessary to wait several weeks for complete osteochondral consolidation and restoration of the joint surface. These procedures are all performed arthroscopically through two small incisions using a camera to view the joint. After the operation, it is necessary to use crutches to move around for several weeks to keep the weight off the knee, as healing is significantly improved with decreased mechanical stress due to weight.